After a long hiatus, the Volkswagen Arteon is back for sale in Australia, and this time it's packing a subtle facelift, but also a new station wagon form factor called the Arteon Shooting Brake. That's what I've brought along today. It's a 206 TSI R-Line in the new lapis blue color. Pretty cool, pretty sporty. So if you've grown up and out of something like a Golf R wagon, is the Arteon Shooting Brake the car to buy? Well, we're gonna find that in today's video. We'll check out the interior, the back seat and the boot of this car and we'll see just how practical it is. We'll discuss the running costs of this $70,000 Volkswagen station wagon and then we'll take it for a drive and see exactly what it's like on town and country roads. Then I'll give you my verdict on the new Arteon Shooting Brake. But before we get started, hit subscribe and the notification bell. Welcome to the interior of the Arteon. And ever since this car came out about four years ago, I've really thought that for a car which has such a cool and expressive design outside, the Passat derived interior always felt a little bit conservative and just divorced from the exterior styling. Volkswagen have updated the cabin of the Arteon though to make it less like a Passat, particularly in the detailing up here in the air vents and the dash, and it does look a bit better and a bit cooler. The old clock has been removed as well and there's now just a sort of flush air vent which runs the width of most of the dash and I do think the effect works quite nicely and even though the overall design remains understated, it's classic Volkswagen or what we used to regard as classic Volkswagen. So clear controls, most things have a dedicated button for them. The quality is very high and it's quite different to vehicles like the new Golf. So there's still a dedicated uh, climate control panel, which I think is really great. It is touch based, but you've got a fan control, temperature, heated seat controls all there in the one spot. I think that works a little bit better than integrating everything into the touch screen. Speaking of the touchscreen, it's 9.2 inches. It's the old Discover Pro system, which has started to be superseded in newer Volkswagens, but hey, it still works really well. You have wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto and a Harman Kardon stereo, which sounds terrific in this car. And interestingly, the acoustic is a little better in the Arteon shooting brake than it is in the Passat wagon, perhaps because the cabin is a little bit smaller, maybe it's different, slightly different uh, positioning of speakers. It just sounds a bit warmer and clearer to my ears. We also look forward to a digital instrument cluster, very configurable. You can put a full map there, media, trip information, that works well. New steering wheel for the facelift Arteon, still perforated around here on the sides, plastic paddle shifters, and these new capacitive touch buttons, which are okay. They work better than the ones in a Mercedes, but still not as good as the old physical controls on the steering wheel, in my opinion. Down here on the dash, no wireless charging, which feels a little bit dated, but lovely gear shifter, a proper automatic gear shifter, lovely leather boot, and then two okay sized cup holders, big flock line door bins. We're also sitting on R-line seats because the Arteon is available in two grades now. Elegance, which is more of a luxury spec, you can get a light colored interior, and it has a front wheel drive 140 kilowatt engine. I'd probably get that, save a bit of money. Here in the R-Line though, you get these much more tall bolstered seats, integrated headrest, black leather with carbon effect detailing. I'd probably wish that they didn't really do the carbon thing. It's a little bit naff, but the seats themselves are very comfortable and supportive and heated. However, in the Elegance, you also get seat cooling, which is kind of interesting. Material quality, generally very good. This feels like a high-end Volkswagen, like a Passat, like a Touareg, rather than more like a, a Polo or a Golf. This car feels a bit special, almost Audi level in fact. So I'm quite happy sitting here. Let's check out the back seat. The big difference between an Arteon shooting brake or a Passat wagon and something like a Golf or a Golf wagon is the amount of space you get here in the back. Even though the Arteon actually looks quite small when you view it from the outside, Inside, it's enormous. And you can see that with the driver's seat in my driving position, I'm six foot tall, I have acres of leg room. It's really impressive. My toes have also got heaps of space and headroom is really good. Keep in mind, this car hasn't been optioned with its sole option, which is a panoramic sunroof. That means I do have a little bit more headspace, but it is very dark in here because everything is black, including the headliner. Another reason why I'd probably opt for the Elegance wagon with the light colored interior, just to give everything a bit of a lift. But still, the back seat is a good one. It's spacious, but the uh, thigh angle is also inclined up, so your legs are supported for long journeys. There are seat heaters back here, big air vents with lots of air coming out of them, another USB-C port and a 12 volt socket so you can add even more charging ability. 
plus high quality soft materials in the back, unlike in a Golf. Another sign that the RTN is part of a higher caliber of Volkswagen product than many of the other models in the lineup like to see that. Soft door grabs and more flock line door bins. Plus we get a flip down armrest with two and a half cup holders and a pass through. This car has all wheel drive, so it'd be pretty fun to take on snow and you could get your skis in here. A few people have raised the question of fitting chains on such large wheels. We've got 20s here. I did a quick and cursory check. I was able to find chains that were compatible for this car. So if that was gonna be your question, I suppose that's my answer. For quite a few years, Volkswagen have offered a Passat wagon in Australia, including with the same 206 TSI engine as the Artian. But hey, the more the merrier, the Volkswagen Group are probably the biggest supporters of station wagons in Australia. And this Artian shooting brake is a welcome addition, particularly because it's even more practical than its lift bag counterpart, but not by a massive amount. In terms of balls, it's really very similar. 57 balls for the shooting brake, 565 litres of boot space is the claim. The lift back, you can actually squeeze just a couple more in, but in terms of taller stuff, you're gonna be slightly better in the shooting brake, but if you're after maximum practicality, you are gonna to wanna to go for the Passat 206 TSI wagon instead, because it doesn't have this cutaway roof line. Instead, it's very square and blocky and, and super pragmatic. So what's it gonna cost you to own and run a Volkswagen Artian shooting brake? Well, the purchase price of the 206 TSI R-Line is just over $70,000 before on-road costs, but Volkswagen's website is reporting a drive-away price of about 81 grand here in New South Wales. So it's not cheap, but as we've seen, it does have quite a high level of spec. A service pack will cost you $2,700 for five years, covering 75,000 kilometers of servicing. There's also a five year unlimited kilometer warranty on the car. And in terms of fuel economy, the claim is 7.7 .7 liters per 100 kilometers on the car for the premium octane it requires. In my testing, I've only managed about 11 liters per 100. So what's the Artian like to drive? Well, it's pretty familiar from the last time we were behind the wheel of one of these big Volkswagens when they launched in Australia in, I think, 2018. But they weren't on sale for all that long. They, they left the market for about two years, uh, but they're back now and the range has expanded pretty considerably. Uh, when the RTN came out here, you could only get them in really one variety and that was a 206 TSI liftback. You can still get that in facelifted form, now available in the Golf R signature color, Lapis Blue but there's also an entry-level RTN model, or not really entry-level, more like mid-spec, called the Elegance, 140 TSI Elegance, which has a 140 kilowatt, two litre turbo with front wheel drive, and it's more of a luxury spec car with a comfort suspension. And then you can get the 206 TSI R-Line, which is reasonably similar to before with some minor changes. Uh, that's what I'm driving now, but perhaps the biggest news for, um, I guess, buffs of, of large passenger cars rather than SUVs is that there's now a choice of RTN in liftback or shooting brake wagon. And it's, it's kind of funny because Volkswagen Group just gives so much support here in Australia to wagons, even though the wagon buying cohort is relatively small, it's a valuable customer for Volkswagen, they see it as. And so you can actually get a Golf R wagon, a Passat 206 TSI wagon, or an RTN 206 TSI wagon. And that's an awful, amount of choice, um, but the cars do have very different uh, personas, particularly the Golf, which has 235 kilowatts of power, but even between the Artian and the Passat, the cars do feel subtly different and enough time behind the wheel of each reveals those differences. The Artian feels like a smaller, more compact, more lithe car. I think the Passat's a little bigger, uh, a little more practical as a result, so you can kind of make a choice between those attributes. But the thing which is great about the RTN's driving dynamics is that like quite a few fast wagons, this vehicle is able to both ride and handle at the same time. With quick SUVs, including Volkswagen's own Tiguan R, which Pont reviewed recently on the channel, it can certainly handle, uh, but the ride is really firm in order to make that so. It's livable, but it's definitely noticeably firm. The difference with the Artian, which has the 206 kilowatt two liter engine with all wheel drive, is that it's able to be much more supple while still delivering really excellent uh, handling as well. So it sits really flat in the corners. It feels so tenacious when you just chuck it into a bend. It almost feels like it has four wheel steering, but the rear suspension has just been set up insanely well to help the front end point in. And yet it never loses 
the composure and compliance of the ride quality. The RTM was, I think, the first Volkswagen to be released in Australia with the company's new gen adaptive dampers with about 15 stages of change. But that system has really been finessed since that car was released and the facelift RTM has arrived. And you can get a basically perfect ride handling balance with this car, just closer to the comfort side than normal, I find, is where I really like the dampers in this thing. But you can go right to the stiffest setting if that's your bag, but you don't actually need to because the car handles perfectly fine in a reasonably plush damper setting. And that's the kind of balance that you can really only get from a sedan, wagon, or hatch. SUVs make it much harder because they have to support their taller, usually heavier bodies. Speaking of weight, the RTN, even with all the all-wheel drive bits and gubbins, it's about 1,700 kilos. Not the lightest, but quite a bit lighter than uh, a correspondingly sized crossover would be. Uh, and it just feels pleasurable and satisfying to drive basically all the time. It's quick. The seven-speed wet clutch DSG is a great partner to the two-liter EA888 engine. Really no low-speed oddities. Volkswagen have ironed out so many issues with the DSG. It now works really well. The steering is mid-weighted. You can change the weighting of it, but it just feels about right in terms of ratio. Perhaps a little more feel and feedback would be good, but it's actually better than most in that regard too. Um, so it's really tiny things that you can pull out of the RTN that you'd like to see improve. Stuff like cooled seats in the R-Line, a lighter interior for the R-Line, um, a standard sunroof might be good, but some people prefer a slick top, I suppose. Even the adaptive safety tech is well-tuned, better than most bang on in the center of the lane for the lane keep assist, smooth adaptive cruise, AEB, reversing AEB, a 360 degree parking camera. The Genesis G70 shooting brake does have superior blind spot monitoring to this car because like a lot of Genesis and Hyundai and Kia product, it has blind spot cameras, which are really high resolution. It'd be great to see Volkswagen basically copy that in the future, but the sensor-based blind spot monitoring is, is livable enough. It's refined, it's quiet, it's balanced, it doesn't shout about itself. If you want more mongrel, you can always go for the Golf R, uh, which has drift mode and that sort of thing. The all-wheel drive system is a little more neutral on the RTN, but I think for what a lot of people want in this segment, which is just a refined, luxurious estate car that isn't as expensive as an Audi, this car delivers a lot, and I like driving it. So that's the new Volkswagen RTN shooting brake in 206 TSI R-Line form. What can you say about this car? Well, it's just so satisfying. Like virtually any big Volkswagen, this car punches above its actual price to feel like something even more expensive. It's not the cheapest option on the block, that's for sure, but the degree of engineering in this vehicle just feels so high. The engine and gearbox work together really well. The updated adaptive dampers are superb. The handling's really good. This is the kind of car you can own for a long time and just enjoy driving it in that quietly satisfied way every single day. I would have one and I think that's quite a good endorsement of the vehicle. Let me know your thoughts down below though, what you think about this car, whether you'd consider one yourself. While you're down there, make sure to hit subscribe and the notification bell. And as always, thank you for watching Chasing Cars.